Good morning. It's Friday, September 1st. Welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name is Preston Hannibal. Thank you for setting aside this time to join in this brief service of prayer and reflection. And now let us say our prayers. Today's appointed Psalm is Psalm 24. We will read a portion of Psalm 24. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive the blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, lives marked by faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, by patience, kindness, and goodness toward all whom we meet, by love, joy, and peace within our hearts, so that by our deeds, our actions, and our lives, we and others may see God's spirit in us and working through us. Amen. This morning's lesson appointed for the commemoration of David Pendleton Ogerhader, deacon and missionary is taken from the fifth chapter of Luke's gospel, beginning at the first verse. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out just a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So he signaled to his partners in the other boat to come and help him. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me, Lord for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of (coughs) fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Up to this point in Luke's gospel narrative, Jesus has been traveling solo. He has been teaching and preaching in the local synagogues, but his following has been increasing every time he preaches. We now find him on the shore of Lake Gennesaret, also called the Sea of Galilee. In his book, Luke for Everyone, Bishop Tom Wright sets a vivid picture of the scene our Lord might have encountered. Bishop Wright says, it seems that he'd begun to teach a group by the shore, but the crowd got bigger and bigger and there simply wasn't room on the shore. So he improvised. 
along the shoreline close to Capernaum, there is a sequence of steep inlets, a zigzagging shoreline, with each inlet forming a natural amphitheater. If you get in a boat and push out just a little way, you can speak in a natural voice, and the folk on the hillside can hear you. So Jesus used what he had at hand, a crowd, a lake, and a boat. I imagine that the fisherman whose boat he borrowed must have been a little taken aback, but they were captivated by his words of hope and his words of change. They had worked all night and caught nothing, but they listened to him when he said, go out just a little further into the deeper waters. They must have been skeptical, but they went and they were glad they did. You all know the story. They had a huge catch. But was it a miracle? Or did Jesus, from his perspective on the boat, see a school of fish through the clear water of the lake? God's miracles, the little epiphanies of life, are all around us and happen more often than we would think. It's just that we don't have the bandwidth to take the time or have the perspective to see them. Simon Peter, when he saw the catch of fish, fell to his knees before Jesus. Master, leave me. I am a sinner and I can't handle this holiness. Leave me to myself. Jesus said to Simon, there's nothing to fear. From now on, you'll be fishing for men and women. Now think honestly about whether you could do what these new disciples of Jesus did. Leave friends and family, security and community, and becomes God's instruments of redemption. This morning, I would like us to consider opening ourselves and being aware enough to listen to God, really listen, and then act on what we understand God is saying to each and every one of us. In today's world, as in the time of Peter, James, and John, it is not easy, it's not an easy thing to do. Quite simply, our lives get in the way. Pretensions of discipleship status notwithstanding, the acceptance of God's call is a choice that all of us who call ourselves Christian must think about as we seek to discover the role that God would have us play in the working out of God's kingdom of justice and righteousness in our midst. Today, the church commemorates the life and ministry of David Pendleton Okerader, deacon and missionary. David Okerader was a warrior and leader of the Cheyenne Nation in Oklahoma. In 1875, he was captured and imprisoned when he was accused of leading a group of fighters in a dispute with the government over Indian land rights. He was shipped off to a military compound in Florida. Through a series of events during his imprisonment, he converted to Christianity. After his release in 1878, he relocated to Syracuse, New York to study for the ministry. He was ordained a deacon in 1881 and returned to Oklahoma, where he founded schools and missions and continued his ministry among the Native American communities in that region. His life was not easy. He encountered the skepticism of many in the Native American community, as well as the institutional and local racism of our own church. Yet he persisted and continued to bring people to the knowledge and love of God. When he first returned to Oklahoma to begin his very productive and very faithful ministry, he said, you all know me, 
You remember me when I led you out to war. I went first. And what I told you was true. Now I have been away to the east and have learned about another captain, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is now my leader. He goes first, and all he tells me is true. I come back to my people to tell you to go with me now in this new road, a war that makes all for peace. Much like Peter, James, and John, David Okerader followed Jesus when he called him. And just like the first apostles, he was led by the Spirit to bring people to the knowledge and love of Christ Jesus. The question for each one of us is simple. Could we, would we, do we risk all to follow Jesus when he calls us to God's service? Amen. Let us pray. God of unsearchable wisdom and infinite mercy, you chose a captive warrior, David Okerader, to be your faithful servant and sent him to be a missionary to his own people and to exercise the office of a deacon among them. Liberate us who commemorate him today from bondage to self and empower us for service to you and to the neighbors you have given to our care. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us pray for all those in need. Lord God, we bring before you the griefs and perils of peoples and nations, the necessities of the homeless, the helplessness of the aged, the sighing of prisoners, the pains of those who are weak, who are sick and injured, the sorrowing of the bereaved. Comfort and sustain them, O Lord of all, and in your great mercy, relieve their distress, that seeing your loving power, we and they may benefit from your great goodness and serve you all the days of our lives. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You are the body of Christ. May you have the heart of Christ, tender for mercy. May you have the eyes of Christ to see a world in pain. May you have the feet of Christ to bring good news to a world in desperate need of Christ's peace, Christ's love, and Christ's mercy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>